Hello, welcome to another video from Up New X looking at Chinese Romland in the past week. And let's get right into it. Why am I doing this? It might just be I've watched too much Spring Mountain video. First, on the 20th on Aichi, we have the period drama going live, Da Li Si Shao Qing Yu, White Cat Legend, the period drama led by Ding Yuxi and Ren Ming. This is based on a manga that was quite well known within China that started as a four square manga that gradually grew into a big IP. And the main character, as the title suggests, is a white cat. Clearly, it's impossible to do that in a live action drama that will cost too much CG money. So they still have a guy playing the character who occasionally turns into a CG cat. I have watched up to episode 10 by this point of this drama. The thing with it is as a detective drama of case breaking, like one of the most bland case breaking drama I've ever come across where there literally is no case. Pretty much nothing that's so interesting for you to look at unless you just really like the actors. Then on 21st, we had two dramas going live and they're both contemporary dramas. The first one is a drama that finished production back in 2019 and didn't air until now. So it's four years delayed. And when it airs, it aired on one satellite television and four different web platforms, including IU Teng plus Le Shi, which is actually still around Le TV, although it had epic bankrupt episode back in 2017. And it's called Chuang Xiang Ji, English title, pretty straightforward, Dream. It's about a group of young people going to Beijing, trying to break into the big city type of drama. 38 episodes, led by Jia Nai Liang, Qiao Xin, also including Zheng He Hui Zi and Pang Han Chen. And I researched as much as I could, trying to find out why this drama is delayed for four years, couldn't really find any news. It's airing, that's it. If you're curious, it's there. The next drama that went live on the same day went live on Tencent and it's called Lie Bing the Hunter. 18 episodes, contemporary drama, anti-drug drama, so you have a drug dealer and you have police. Very simple setup. It's led by Zhang Songwen and Yao Anna. Yao Anna being the second princess of Huawei. I checked the drama first episode and I couldn't continue. It's made up with a lot of very messy editing that doesn't make sense at all with very on the nose acting that feels like everybody is on steroids even including Zhang Songwen and then Yao Anna's acting in this drama is better avoid watching it wouldn't really recommend this drama particularly if you actually like Zhang Songwen then don't watch this one then we have a couple of dramas announcing their schedule for the end of the month to go live First, 24 episodes, period drama on Tencent. And this one actually has finished production, has been scheduling for over a year, finally is happening. Yong An Meng, English title, Yong An Dream, based on an IP novel. It's a period comedy romantic drama led by Ouyang Nana and Xu Zhengxi. Based on the trailer, it looks like a very sort of happy, distant, love couple drama with a lot of misunderstanding between these two people coming together and very, average production quality of Tencent period drama, idol drama. The only thing that people tend to joke about this drama online is it's based on a novel with a title that literally says the first beauty, the most pretty person in that city or in that existence. And obviously the character is played by Ouyang Nana and depending on how you define beauty, she is not the type of typically would be regarded as the most beautiful woman in the city type of lady in Asian drama land. Okay, so people tend to joke about that whole title. Obviously, when it gets adapted to drama, they took out the first beauty in the title until it actually airs. We don't know what it's going to look like. And if it's a happy, actually making sense and give you fun romantic drama, I'd be okay with it. On that same day, 28th, a drama is scheduled to go live on Yoku and this one I am a lot more interested in. It's 28 episodes contemporary and it is the drama version of the film Pegasus. This year, Spring Festival Chinese Cinema had Pegasus 2, the film screening. A couple of years ago, it was the first film. If you still remember, it did quite well, led by Shen Teng, and it's produced and directed by Han Han. Now we have this drama version airing that's also produced by Han Han, and it takes the story from the same universe and same characters of the Pegasus film, the first one, but it's almost like a parallel universe, another form of reality with the same characters played by different people and slightly different story. 
we have Wang Yanling, the actor playing Shen Teng's role in the Pegasus movie, and then we have Hu Xianxu, the actor playing Huang Jingyu's role in the Pegasus movie. If you've watched the first movie, you know what's the relationship and story between these two characters in the drama, Wang Yanling and Hu Xianxu. And the drama story is about the Wang Yanling's role, got into the accident at the end of the first film, flying out, had his spirit and consciousness transported back in time and ended up in Hu Xianxu's body. So basically, in the film version, it would be Shen Teng's spirit and consciousness entering Huang Jingyu's body, but a couple of years back in time, so that he can help stopping the accident that's going down in time in the future. So that's the setup. If you've watched the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, you can totally ignore that and just think about this as a totally new drama, 28 episodes contemporary led by Wang Yanling and Hu Xianxu. Because of Hikaru no Go's drama, I always had this filter on Hu Xianxu and I like the fact that he's now in another drama that has this type of supernatural element that's a contemporary drama that's based on the existing IP. This is among all the dramas I'm talking about today that I have highest interest in and I can't wait to see it happening. One day after that, on the 29th, we have a proper drama, the serious drama with mid-age cast, all very heavyweight actors, airing on Hunan Television, Satellite Television, and Mango TV, Jiang He Ri Shang. English title, Sunrise on the River, very in-time contemporary drama about environmental pollution and all the politics that goes into a city's development and different levels of officials to do with environmental pollution. It's done by a cast that's like, wow, epic. It is only 24 episodes. Huang Zhizhong, Mei Ting, Jiang Wu, only as the first three, and then the rest are also very heavyweight. Huang Zhizhong, what can I say? He's a brilliant actor. If you still remember uh, Royal Nirvana, that, that drama, he played the emperor, one of the best emperors I've seen. And he can do anything. Okay, it, this guy is a great actor. Mei Ting, since day one, she is like top top actress in China, whether it's in film or television. And then Jiang Wu, he's the brother of Jiang Wen, the famous director, and rarely shows up in anything now these days. So the fact that he's in the drama as the third lead is in itself quite uh, unusual. Then we have another Yoku drama that has just released a new trailer during this week. It hasn't said when it's gonna air, but it looks like it's gonna air anytime. Romantic drama, contemporary drama, 24 episodes drama, very typical setup and style. And if you look at the title, 别对我动心, English title, Everyone Loves Me. Okay, <laughs> it couldn't be more obvious about what this type of drama is. And if you look at the casting, Lin Yi and Zhou Ye, immediately you're thinking about the tension drama that happened at the end of last year, 很想很想你. It's not the same, okay, obviously not, but if you look at the trailer, it reminds you of that heavily. It just has a little bit more, I say, um, conflict. Because in this drama setting, the two characters still meet online, but they meet in a game and they're enemies that are fighting all the time. And they don't know each other's identity, but they've already met in reality. So it has that layer of they're already kind of in love or in competition, but they didn't find out who they are each. They've released the trailer and Zhou Ye looks as pretty as she always is. And if you like Ling Yi, well, Ling Yi looks like Ling Yi. <laughs> and when it's gonna air, we don't know. It could be next week, honestly, or half a year later. Then we have a couple of official news on dramas that are wrapped or in the production and very close to wrapping. I've already said this before Chinese New Year that certain dramas have wrapped, including The Grand Princess, Du Huanian, led by Zhang Linghe and Zhao Jinmai. And it is the case, but they didn't actually officially announce it. I guess they just wrapped it and everybody went home. <laughs> but then they put out the photos and video featuring the wrapping up right after the holiday break. I'll put something up here for you to see. And one thing I noticed during this round of promotion when they talk about wear wrap and this is the video is that they really emphasize a lot about how much they've researched and tried to replicate the elegance of the Wei Jing period. This is a fictional story, but it's kind of set in the Wei Jing time. So give you an idea, Wei Jing is around the same kind of time that Ren Jialun and Bai Lu drama a couple of years ago, right? It's kind of set in the same time. And Wei Jing is a very peculiar time in Chinese history and quite worth so sort of analyzing and today I'm actually in my own self-made hanfu that is based on a Weijin style. Anyway, the drama's 
promotional video is saying we're trying to do this and that research. And I'm like, come on, stop doing that. Wei Jing actually has a very distinctive look and very far from our current aesthetics about what looks good or not. If you're actually being very authentic to history, it will look like this, which is very different from what your drama trailer has. The hairstyle, the costumes barely look anything Wei Jing. The sets, and architecture is even further away and then it's fully shot in Hengdian. I was there like I, last September, I saw their trucks moving around and all the sets, at least in the trailer that I could see is like, I recognize where you took all those shots and there's nothing to do with Wei Jing. I, I just feel that's a bad sign for me when a drama promotes itself, when it doesn't know what it's talking about, it's just like always a red flag. So it's probably gonna show up end of the year or next year. So we shall wait and see if uh, my unfortunate prediction turns out to be true. There's another drama that has wrapped, which is Xiantai You Shu, a period drama led by Deng Wei and Xiang Hanzhi, Love of the Divine Tree. And when it airs, it will be airing on ITE. The thing about this period drama is the director is Yin Tao, who has directed these dramas. It's written by the author Liu Fang, who has written very successful dramas such as Lian Hua Lou last year. Mysterious Lotus Casebook. Also, a couple of years ago, Liu Li, Love and Redemption, but also things that are not so well accepted. So this is a mixed creative team with high traffic male lead actor, at least. We shall see when it actually airs, what it's gonna look like. And then another drama that hasn't really wrapped, but probably is already well like on the way of wrapping, <laughs> puts out a set of promotional posters this week officially, Guo Jingming drama, although I don't know what name he's gonna use this time. It's a pair drama that's been in the making as well for a couple of months, and I keep seeing all kinds of paparazzi photos online, I just haven't talked about it. It's called Da Meng Gui Li, Fans of Fortune. It's another pair drama with a lot of yao demon, including Hong Ming Hao, Chen Du Ling as the two leads, and then Tian Jia Rui, if you remember My Journey to You, the the third Gong San, the guy who got really popular after the airing of the drama. So this whole set of posters of the main characters, they're all like lying down on grass, on the ground with different things around them. One thing I would have to say is I just don't get what's the aesthetics of his coloring. Whether it was in My Journey to You or this one, that whole heavy, dark, cooler tone color that looks really Yin Jin <laughs> underworld. And the other is so much photoshopping, so beyond what they really look like. There's this whole uncanny valley kind of effect happening with the posters, particularly Tian Jia Rui. I can't even recognize it's him. Like I was looking, what? This is Tian Jia Rui, really? <laughs> I, I had to like stare at it for like five seconds to recognize, oh, okay, it's him, but like so photoshopped. I already know there's gonna be a lot of slow motion and until the story actually comes out, we shall see whether this time he can actually write a story. Then we have also two things that have started shooting right after the holiday, everybody goes back to work, very hardworking. First one is a contemporary romantic drama that's called Shh, Guo Wang Zai Dong Mian. English title is also Shh, the king is hibernating. You probably have heard me talk about this last year when I talked about that Yu Shu Xin was caught by paparazzi practicing skiing because this drama has a lot to do with skiing. It's led by her and Ling Yi. The girl is a manga artist who got cheated by her company and lost her copyright of her work. And then she meets a guy who is a professional skiing athlete for all kinds of reasons, gave up competitions, but is still very much passionate about the sport. It's about these two people meet and obviously romantic drama. So they're gonna have their love and also have their careers individually sort of get resurrected by meeting each other. So typical, you don't even have to watch the drama to know what the story is. It's gonna be 36 episodes, which I think is too long for contemporary drama of this type of story. So let's hope we don't have a second and third lead couple that just destroys it. And the director of the drama is Li Qingrong, who actually also was the director of Bie Dui Wo Dong Xing. We don't know when, but it may happen anytime, Lin Yi and Zhou Ye. So it's like Lin Yi and Zhou Ye's drama is about to air, and then Lin Yi is filming a new drama with Yu Shu Xin directed by the same director. It almost is like, we worked okay together, let's just do another project. So that's a drama that's being shot right now. Then we also have, to wrap up today's video, a really funny thing. That's like a follow-up of Climbing Up the Spring Mountain, which is Bai Jingting now is shooting a drama in my hometown, Chongqing. And that is the sister drama of Hidden Love, Toto Tambuju, Nan Hong. 
led by Bai Jingting and Zhang Ruonan. And it is the story of Zhao Lusi's character's brother, so played by Ma Boqian in Hidden Love. His love story with a girl, so that's played by Bai Jingting now. So Bai Jingting technically becomes the brother of Zhao Lusi as well. And they're shooting in Chongqing. If Hidden Love was like filled with lead mine for you, well, we have more lead mine in this one because the original novel of this drama is also quite explosive with some very uh, hard to swallow words that they definitely will cut out of the drama, otherwise it's not going to pass censorship. So like I said, it's not going to affect his working schedule if he's signed up with dramas, he's just going to keep making it. There's no cancellation happening on him at all. But because of the Spring Man technology thing, people just want to make fun of him now in China. So what happened was, he went to Chongqing, shoot this drama, and then Chongqing people welcomed him with huge screen at big shopping mall and traffic place, which is very close to where I live actually in Chongqing, so I know exactly where that is. They put emoji version song that's made by Billy Billy content makers to make fun of him on those big screens and play Shang Chun Shan while he's shooting <laughs> in Chongqing. I'm not sure if they're actually in the same location but that immediately gets filmed by people and put on tiktok and everywhere so it's on the internet <laughs> i'm not surprised chongqing people are very straightforward and blunt very like dongbei people in china welcoming very hospitality straightforward but also very spicy and explosive <laughs> and then we just got the news i think like half a day ago which is for yuan xiaojie the 15th of the lunar first month which would happen on sunday i think usually different satellite televisions apart from doing spring festival eve the gala show would also do a smaller more relaxed less rehearsed still happy sort of celebration time show on yuan xiaojie the 15th day and henan television the provincial one of henan province has just announced officially they will re-perform climbing up the spring mountain and until then we shall see how they're gonna do it on stage mountainology is cooling down but it's not ending everybody's jingshenzhuangtai our mental health is not like at the best right now globally so you know <laughs> whatever happens i'm just gonna sit aside eat my melon drink my tea and have fun that's what i intend to do that should conclude today's video from up new x hope you're having a good time at the end of uh, february 2024 i'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long and happy drama